Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Lee Stafford live all the way from Denmark to sunny England. Unfortunately, Lee can't be with us today, so I'm Michael Saunders, and I'm going to be your host over the next hour. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the man of the the man of the day, an absolutely extraordinary hairdresser, Mr. Paul Watts. Thank you, mate. Hello, everybody. Hope we're doing well. Um, I hear that Denmark was lovely and sunny like the UK yesterday. Michael? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, you've got me um, and you guys, if you know me, jump into the comments because we want to see the comments fill up with where you're from, um, what you love about NSE, and just put a little, your favourite emoji in there as well. So in the comment box, put your favourite emoji and uh, we just want to see what, what you, how you're feeling today. So it could be like a thumbs up, it could be a big smiley one, it could be a love heart, it could be literally anything. But today's recipe is the Spiral Rose. And as you can see by two of my beautiful models that were already prepped for you, and there's one here, um, that's going to be our one that I'm going to be working on today. But we're going to be doing a mashup. And you know the LSC recipes, masterclasses as we do for you guys. We tailor them to you, but bringing you a little bit of a twist. And the twist today is, with the twisted tongue being her, and the spiral rose being her, I'm going to be dressing out this one later, but this is the twisted tongue. And it's one of the biggest recipes for in salon right now with, with the tongue method. So on today's live, I'm going to be using both techniques alternately around our spiral rose. So if you know about the spiral rose, we wrap it around and we've got the tongue facing down. So we're wrapping, we're not twisting, we're wrapping. And that's what we're gonna be doing on one of the sections as we alternate rounds. And then with the twisted tongue, we twist our wrist. So then we twist and wrap, twist and wrap, twist and wrap. So you're gonna get a twist and wrap and a spiral rose. And then what that will do is it will create a lot of dishevelment lots of texture and it'll also build up a bit more sort of volume in the hair because you've got that twist in there. So let's see the comments guys. I can't see any comments at the minute. Um, so if you want to get those in there and I'm going to get on with today's recipe and tell you what I've done with the with the prep. So Michael, can you see, or Mike, could you see any uh, any comments coming in? Uh, not at the moment, Paul. Not at not the moment. The moment. Yeah. Let us know what colleges you're from in the comments because uh, I know there's a few new ones as well out there. So if you are a new college, write your college name down because um, I'd love to see where you're where you're all from. Actually, I'll start with the twisted tongue just to show you. I'm gonna I'm gonna go into these in a little bit more detail at the end of it so we can get straight into the recipe. But I've just seen a couple pop up. Laura from Chichester, hello, and Bon is from Chichester. So hi, Paul and Mike. Really good to see you again. Lovely to see you guys. So this is the Twisted Tongue, and this is a really bang on trend way of styling hair in salon. So I, I am a salon stylist, if some of you don't know. Salon owner, I still work in the salon five days a week when I can. But this is something I do on a daily basis. And just giving, and this will be all brushed out for you. But you can see how glamorous those waves are. And this is with the, so this is actually four recipes in one. So when we talk about showing you uh, the future uh, and then getting it onto the salon floor and what salon owners like myself expect from you as, as a hairdresser, this is the one length below there. So it's got a little bit of sort of length towards the front because you know how we, we sort of bring it back A line. It's got a little bit of ombre in there as well. So that's the LSE ombre recipe. It's got the fringe that we do on the bridge of the nose and we cut that in and then we've twisted tongued it. So this is four recipes mashed into one to give you a salon floor ready look. The next one is going to be today's recipe, more, more online of what we're going to be doing. It's just a take on the spiral rose, but a bit more sort of texture in there. So as you know, we'll be, we'll be wrapping it around, but then I did some twists in here as well to give you that texture that you can see here. And then when we, we sort of dress it out and then we'll push in to create a bit more texture. So I'll jump onto that after we've done the recipe today. That um, that first one you showed us, Paul, that just looks absolutely stunning, doesn't it? I well, mean, it look, it just, it's so simple, but it just works, doesn't it? Yes, it's just a salon floor ready look. And 
that's what we that's what we're sort of guiding you through guys it's when you do when i was at college and we just did a one length and then we didn't i didn't really understand how we could mash together recipes to create salon floor ready looks and this is why we've got these master classes because you can see we've got a lovely one length below really sort of bang on fringe there a little bit of color just through those ends which is our ombre recipe and then we'll just finish it off with a twisted tongue and then what we'll do i'll do it now actually one of these combs so this is the the, the shower detangling comb and then we just brush that through just to melt all of that together incredible and see that bounce that we've got there and it's just it's a salon floor ready ready to walk out the sort of salon really so we can go out perfect Stunning. but today's recipe is a favorite because i do love working with texture texture is one of the uh the things that I'm really getting into at the minute. And if you've seen my YouTube channel, it's just Paul Watts Hair, I'm getting into a lot of sort of Afro, I'll show you. So I've just invested in a few of Afro, more curly textured mannequins, because I think with the MBQ, what we're gonna be finding is that we are gonna be expected to do more textured hair, more, more Afro-Caribbean hair. So doing learning how to, to work with curly hair, putting in curl textures, how to sort of work with it is only going to aid you when it gets to sort of level three or onto a salon floor. But so that what I've prepped with today is, where is it? Lee Stafford's double blow mousse. So that was worked through. I've got a little bit of lifting spray and that's what I'm going to be using for the texture. So I'm just going to spritz a little bit through here. And then we've got our tongue nice and ready and hot. So what I've done with the section, I'll just clean it up a little bit, is we've just divided that hair around there. So just gonna tidy it up a little bit. And this gives us that sort of halo section that we section out. Now let us know in the comments, guys, because I see there's a couple coming up. Hello, Jane. Hello, Amber. But is, is upstyling, hairstyling, curling, is that something that you feel confident with? Because if it's not, now is the time to really be getting your questions in. And if you're all sitting in the classroom and the teacher's at the front or to the side, if there's any questions, get them to pop it in here as well, because then you'll be able to ask us anything all day. Well, all, all masterclass. Right. So sectioning, taken from the top and just curves around there, just below that occipital bone, and then comes right back up if you can see, and it gives us that halo section. And then the sections we want to be taking are two centimeter sections, which are just under an inch. Hi, Jackie. Paul, quick question for you, Paul. How, how important is it, do you think, to um, that we need to prep the hair? Oh, massively, because not only does it give us sort of a bit of heat protection, but it also gives us a, a good foundational base to work off with sort of building up the hair's uh, ability to retain heat, retain curl, retain the style for longer. So it's like, it's when you prime a wall. So when you're you're decorating and you don't want to go straight onto plasterboard because it will sort of seep in and you'll lose that sort of strong strength of colour, it's exactly the same. We want to be priming the hair to make sure we've got that longevity. Because obviously that one length below you you've done with that twi with the um uh, uh, the twisted tongue on it. Yeah. And then you've combed it. You've got a huge amount of like grip there, haven't you? I mean, it's got yeah. you know, it, it's like it's going to stay all night, isn't it? Yeah, it's not going to be going anywhere anytime soon, mate. So if that was done without any product, how long do you think that would stay in the hair? Well, it depends. I mean, it all depends on the weather, where you live, humidity. Um, if you're if you're going to be out dancing all night, it's not going to be lasting that long because it's going to be hot and and you've got the the humidity in there in the air and if you're in a club then yeah it's going to be dropping quite quickly but that's why it's so important to be using products just to be building up that hair to give it something to hold on to so i'm just going to get into the first section 
and I'm going to be doing the first section as the traditional spiral rows. So as you know, two centimeter section, one down, and then we wrap. And we're wrapping like that. And that's going to give us a nice flat wrap wave or curl. So that's like a ribbon technique, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. So if you were to get scissors and, and yeah, sort of yeah. rip, rip it along a bit of ribbon and it's, it flat sort of spirals up. Yeah. That's, that's how that would look. Got it. So let's take the next two centimetre section. And now we're going to do the twisted tongue method on here, but we're still going to be doing it down. So all it is, it's just in the wrist. So we get it. And remember, we're going around the same way. So we're going to get it. And then I'm going to twist my wrist. And you can see on that bit there, it's twisted and then twisted and then twisted. And then you should see a little bit of difference in these two curls or waves. Let me bring it close to you. So you can see that front one is lovely and smooth. And then the second one's just a little bit thinner, a little bit more texture in there. Mm. So that's the difference between those two wrapping methods when it comes to wrapping and curling hair or waving hair. Anybody in the comments say they like doing uh, like curling or hair up? We've got a question just come in there from Laura and she's asking, what kind of curls do you prefer and have you put in your YouTube account? Have I put in my YouTube? Yeah, your YouTube. So what? what, what, what? Ah, yeah. Right. So my my preferred wave or curl is the, the, the twisted tongue, purely for the reason that I love working with texture. I love hair looking. I mean, that looks beautiful. That That there just looks stunning. And what you get from that's just a little bit more lived in. I'm really one for lived in results. But with the YouTube channel, I have actually got this one on there. But only a little snippet. It just shows you a tiny little snippet of what I did there. But thank you for that question, Laura. Um, so you can see with these, this gives a really good example. So you've got the, the flat wrap, ribbon wave, ribbon wave, sorry. You've got the twisted twisted spiral technique and then you've got the ribbon again and can you see how the two ribbons sort of lift off the scalp and then the the twisted tongue sits a bit flatter mm. you can see that with that texture in that middle one definitely they're completely different aren't they they are yeah and it's something that you can i mean you could do the same haircut on everybody but all you could do is just twist the hair differently and if you twisted the hair differently that's what will give you a different looking result. So we did the ribbon, twisted, ribbon. Now we're on the twisted again. So it's all in the wrist. You twist in, that around there, twisting and twisting. I'm just gonna let that sit there. But any more questions, guys, get them in, like Laura. And there's the, the twisted. What's, what, what advice would you give to someone um, that would like to start a YouTube account for hair? And that's from um, Laura as well. What advice would I give for someone to start a YouTube channel? What's the best way to start a YouTube? Like anything, just start. Don't, don't, think, don't think about it too much because you, you'll think yourself out of it. You'll be thinking, oh, do, does anyone want to listen to me? Like, what equipment do I need? I need to spend all this money and all this. You've probably got the best camera available in your pocket on your phone. And you don't need to go any further than that when it, at the beginning because you really want to see first if you enjoy doing it. Because that's one of the things is, is do, do I enjoy making videos? Do I enjoy editing? And if you're working with an iPhone, you've got iMovie on there that's free to edit. And then on Android, you've got another editor but one that you can get is called Cap Cut. Cap, like a baseball cap cut. And it's just getting into it. This is something that I have with my team a lot. I always try and encourage them to really jump on socials and, and get really involved in making videos. Because not only does it uh, give you a, your profile a boost, but what it does 
is it gives you just that bit more confidence in, in what you're doing because you're trying to teach others how to do it. So you need to really get your recipes 10 out of 10 and then you can really show it to the world. But biggest bit of advice is just do it because if you film it, you don't have to put it out. You can just edit it and you can put it out when you're ready. That's a great question. Thank you. Good. I mean, that's great advice, Paul, isn't it? And and would you say that on your early early um, practices for doing YouTube, your account, would you say you made a lot of mistakes? Loads. Loads of mistakes. I mean, if you go back to look at some of my first videos, they are... They're, they're cringe they're cringe worthy but that's the best thing about them because i'm learning from it i'm learning from from what i did back then it's just it's completely different to what i do now but it's, it's about everything i mean haircuts right at the beginning curling hair right in the beginning completely different to the way that we do it now so it is just a case of doing it and just seeing if you enjoy it but i can 100 percent say if you stick at it at the beginning, it's 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 not hard. It's just a lot of time, but it'd be worthwhile because your 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 skill level and your confidence will increase dramatically. Great advice. So I'm just still working through here, alternating between them both. So we're, we're flat ribbon wrapping, and we are which is the spiral rose traditional technique, and then we are twisting the spiral rose to give a bit more. So there's the twist there. You can see a bit more texture into that root area. And then there, it's quite flat. So that tells you that, right, we're going to be twisting our wrist in here now. And twisting that. And we're going all the same way. So a question to you guys. Let me know in the, in the comments. What, what's your favourite recipe and why? I'd love to know why and, and which is your favourite recipe. Because I think I'll tell you mine. Mine is the one I use daily in the salon is the long grad. It's just such a great technique uh, for getting symmetry around the face, building in that strength, keeping in that baseline. I think that's one of the, the biggest salon winning recipes for me. But then also the twisted tongue. Definitely. I think that long grad has got to be one of the one of the most used salon friendly haircuts, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And this is the thing I really want to get over to you guys is that we do use them in salon. I'm not just saying this. I use them on the YouTube channel. I do use the recipes on a daily basis. And well, all of the staffs do when, when we are doing clients and haircuts and tongue in. And we do use these techniques still, but we'll just be putting a twist on them, which is why me and the staffs have, have, have sort of put these twisted recipes together to show you how we can create these salon floor ready looks like that one just there the twisted tongue with the, with the one length below with the fringe and with that little bit of ombre because that is basically what we do in salon on a weekly basis if not daily basis so so because you, you still work in your salons don't you paul i do yeah and how many days a week would you say you're working actually on the floor in the salons? Uh, if I'm not doing this, well, I mean, I say that, I've been on the salon floor this morning. Yeah. So five days a week. Right, f five days a week. So so I've got a question for you then. How often would you say that you stray away from either a level two or a level three recipe in, in your day-to-day -day work in the salon? Completely stray away? Yeah. I don't think, I don't think ever. I think, I think the, the fundamentals of hair cutting, dressing, yeah. styling. Yeah. Hair cutting, line layer graduation. Like, yeah, line layer graduation, which yeah. is what we teach. Um, when it comes to styling hair, I use this same tongue. I use this same, same technique to, to twist my waves in or curls. Uh, Colour wise, if I, use, if I do an ombre, balayage, dip dye, want to add a bit of dimension, I'll use the foil technique or I'll use the freehand ombre technique, but maybe go a little bit higher. So, so it, really, then, if a level two, level three learner learns learns the least Stafford recipes, level two, level three, they are completely 
salon ready and feel 100% confident to be working on the salon floor. 100%. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. One of my girls upstairs today, because I'm down in the, in the studio today, um, she's up there and she did the LSE uh, MVQ2 about yeah. four, four years ago. And she's up, she's, she's just grown so, so much. She still does little bits of the, of the LSE in, in every haircut, in every colour, in every styling. But one of the biggest things that I always sort of get is there's so much section in, in the highlights. And there is. But the thing with that is, is when you become really competent and 10 out of 10 working a really sort of heavy Saturday in the salon, you probably won't section everything because you're already really in tune with where they go. But that's that's the fundamental. You know exactly where those foils placement go. And that's because you've had a really good foundation of education from LSE. And you you probably won't be, oh, get all these sections in. You'll be like, no, a foil goes there, a foil goes there. I think, I think that's it. Lee, Lee has always turned around and said, once you become a big 10, once, you, once you've got that... Um, that recipe down to a T, then feel free to smash it up and change the section in and change the angles of things and and see what you end see what the end result's like. Yeah, hundred percent. Like Jackie, Jackie has just said that she loves the beach perm and the ombre recipes. Yeah, again, salon winners. That, um, that ombre is such a winner, isn't it? Yeah, such a winner and. I, I even use that for balayage as well. So where we take the ombre up to a certain point, I and but we drop out those corners to keep the depth and the dimension, I use that for my balayage, some of them, where I, I take the corner and I drop it out, but I know I'm going to get perfect sort of blending, I'm going to get perfect placement, all because of that recipe. So what I'm doing now is just going through the halo section again, just coming up, whoops, coming up to that front. So basically, then Paul, for our level two, level three learners, you're all you're yep. doing is you're alternating your your tonguing technique each one, aren't you? Yeah. So I'll I'll show you again on this section up here, yep. and I'll just show you my section there so you guys can see what I'm doing. Thank you. So again. That halo section on the top, which exposes another layer that we are going to twist and spiral through there. And we're working the same way all the way through. So what I did underneath, I started off with a uh, traditional spiral. Now I'm going to start off with a twisted spiral. So we get, where's that line? Oh, ping tail. And remember, we're going two centimetres. So just under an inch through there. So I started off with, with the traditional spiral, which is the ribbon sort of wrap. So what I'm going to start with now is the twist. So then they, they sort of sit on top of each other and then it gives us just a really beautiful texture all the way through. So all in the wrist with the twist. So you get your tongue in there. And normally with the twisted tongue, we'd be working here, wouldn't we? And we'd be like that. But with the spiral, we're like this. So we get it. And then we twist our wrist. And you can see my wrist there is there. Twisting. And then twisting. 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 And then that gives us that really nice bit of texture in there. Nice. <clears throat> and then we just let that fall off. And then we get our next section. Which is another two centimetres. And then what's this one going to be, guys? If I've just done the twisted, let us know in the comments now. I know there's a little delay, so I'm just going to let you put some answers in there. What is this going to be now? We did a twist. Now we're going to do a ribbon flat wrap. And we're just alternating between both of them. So that one was a twist. This is a flat. Let that drop off. We have a question from um, Amelia from Chichester College, and she says, what is your favourite aspect of hairdressing, especially when you do YouTube Live? 
Is that Amelia? Hi, Amelia. Um, best aspect of hairdressing, especially when you do a YouTube live. Yeah. Um, meeting new people. I have to say that meeting clients, uh, new connections, networking. But the the favorite aspect of in hairdressing. I mean, yeah, connecting with people. That's that's one of my biggest aspects that I really love. And when I do the YouTube lives, like I'm I'm now in Kettering, where one of my salons is. Uh, I'm in the I'm in the basement, and I'm talking to all you guys. I mean, that's an amazing thing to be able to achieve in in today's sort of world that I can I can be doing hair for you here, and we're connecting. But from a technical point of view, I think it's just sharing. I think that's the biggest thing. That, that I could big biggest bit of advice I could probably give you today is don't be afraid to share and to, to help others because a lot of people just think oh no if, if I show them they're going to know exactly what I do uh, and I'm not be any good anymore but I think just sharing as much as possible and uh, just helping people that's why I started my YouTube channel that's why I got involved in LSE that's why I do what I do as an educator. I just love to help and inspire hairdressers to uh, to get better, and that's why I'm here today with you guys. So I hope that helped. If if you want to know what I enjoy from a technical point of view, um, I love doing precision haircuts. I love doing uh, colours which which are a little bit sort of uh, lived in. Like I said with the curls, I've got a real thing for for lived in hair texture and colours and haircuts. Uh, if you check out my new, I put a video up yesterday, uh, and I'm just uh, using some new scissors that are, that are on the market, and it's all about creating texture within the hair, and uh, I think that's one of the things for me. I've done precision hair cutting for ages, and I just love to, to add a bit of texture into haircuts. But thank you for the question. Great question. What's yours, Mike? What's your favourite aspect? Oh, God. Gee, I mean, let me have a little think about that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's being in the salon, isn't it, and just having that buzz around you. I mean, I, 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 mean, I love working in a team. You know, I, 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 had, a, I had a salon on the – I live in Denmark now, but I had a salon on the south coast of England for 25 years, and I, I, I couldn't think about working on my own or working in a small team. Uh you know, we grew the business to there, there was a lot of stylists there and a lot of assistants and receptionists. And I just love that buzz of going to work. And, you know, when you when you do a haircut or colour and you're so chuffed with the result or so excited about the result, you've got to share it with your colleagues. And, and um, yeah, that buzz in the salon, um, I don't think there's anything like it, to be honest with you. Yeah, the vibe. I mean, talking about that and then obviously what we've just gone through with COVID, I had a day where... I've, so I've got two salons and the team from, and I work between both, and my team in one of the salons all got COVID. So I went over there and worked by myself with just my assistant and um, there was, yeah, it was just me. And it was the worst day working in the salon I've ever had, I think. Not not being able to... Yeah, but um, us off each other. Yeah, the, the vibe just wasn't, like we had the music on and the clients were lovely. But yeah. there's nothing better than a team environment. Yeah, but it's quite funny because we're talking about we're talking about teams in salons, and I know we're doing a, a live masterclass which goes out to a, a number of people, and then other colleges can catch up with that um, on on a YouTube account as well. So the people watching isn't necessarily the the amount of people that will see us. Yeah, but you're actually working blind to yourself. So we're turning around and saying we love that that salon environment and that buzz from the team. But at present, the only person you're talking to is me. Yeah, but then the so comments. So how did that How did that come about? You know, instead of working in the salon, you've got that vibe going on. How difficult was it to transfer from that to working in front of a camera instead of working in front of a mirror? Yeah, really difficult, if I'm honest. I mean, I started YouTube because of lockdown. I had... We, we were made redundant, basically, for eight months, and I had nothing that I could do, but I still wanted to do hair. And what I thought I could do was I could start making videos. I just thought that, that would do. 
and it was a way for me to still keep connected with people. Yeah. And that's how it started. But another big tip of the day, I'll probably be giving you loads of them. Um, Mike just said, how did you transition your skills from working with people to on, on a camera? And that's one of the biggest questions I get asked. How, how do you get the confidence, one, to stand in front of a camera and just talk to nobody? And that's the, that's the key aspect. You're not talking to nobody. You're, you're talking to uh, your subscribers or you're talking to the people you want to share the video with. Uh, you're talking to potential customers. Because I, I had a, a customer, a client in the salon the other Saturday, and she drove down from Sheffield, which is about two hours, 20 minutes drive. Just to, she, she found me on YouTube and she just wanted me to cut her hair. And, and that, I mean, that's just incredible that we can connect with people all over the country, but the world as well, and be able to get new clients. Because that's what Laura was saying earlier about YouTube and that. Mm. Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's just a great way to pick up new clients or, or build your profile. Because since I've been doing YouTube, the amount of companies that have come after me and asked me to do different jobs for them, stage work, would I promote their tools? Um, I mean, all of my tools now, including this, um, are just all sent. So I don't really have to pay for scissors or products or tools or anything anymore because these companies want me to use them and showcase them to you guys on, on the internet. And and that that's it. I mean, you get to you get to that level. I mean, in no means am I anywhere near where I want to be. But it's 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 incredible for 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 that to be able to happen because of it. It's a great attitude you got, Paul. And if you're not alone, mate, there in your studio, yeah, yeah. there on your own, you're not alone. No, no. <laughs> Paul, the last time, and I've worked with you on, on many occasions, haven't I? And yes. we were talking before we went live, and we were talking about um, we, the last time me and Paul worked together, we were doing a hair show, and it was it was for Lee over in um, Norway, wasn't it? Yeah. And can you remember the model's hair that we were doing and what we were doing with their hair? Yeah, it was probably, well, much, much longer and thicker than that, wasn't it? Yeah. And then we wanted a, a result bigger than this. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it just took, well, it took, took forever. But it was, all, it, was all, it was all tonguing though, wasn't it, Paul? It was. You know, it was all in the tonguing. And it's like, you know, see, seeing what you're doing today, it's not that much different from what you're doing now. No, no. No. And that, that's it. I mean, we're, we're using these techniques that we use on a daily basis for shows, like you just said. Me and yes. Mike did a huge show for Lee Stafford. Uh, I think there was like a thousand people in the audience, and we we just showed them what we did with, with Lee Stafford products and tongs and and everything like that, and they absolutely loved it. And then we finished it off with some products and demonstrations, didn't we? Yeah, definitely. So so something like Spiral Rose that um, a lot of people would look at Spiral Rose and say, well, how can I use that? Because it's it's quite a creative finish, isn't it, Spiral Rose? Yeah. So, but we've already touched base that we could possibly use that for um, for shows or photographic work. Yeah. Um, we could also use that for like competition work as well, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, like the, the Lee Stafford um, competition. You know, somebody could actually tong it using the spiral rose technique or the technique you're doing now. Dress it out in a creative way, photograph it, and they're ready to go, aren't they? Yep. And a, and a tool. You might want to want to look at. I was just saying to Mike this morning. I've just got a new tongue, and uh, it broke. I was I was going to try it with this. I'll show you. So I'm much thinner than this, as you can see, and that was going to give so much more texture into the hair and and everything like that. But using Lee Stafford ch uh, chopstick tongue instead of this, you could do that, and uh, really, it would take you a little while, but the result would just be something else and then that's what we used wasn't it in, in norway for one of the models yeah 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 and we were laughing we were laughing this morning because we said it was actually the lee stafford um chopstick one is the one that didn't break it was some other manufacturer's one wasn't it yeah 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 no that's not that's not lee's one yeah <laughs> <laughs>
Right, so I'm just working through. I'm still alternating between them all. We're doing the spiral rose technique, but as you know, we wanted to create a bit more texture today. How much, what time are we doing? Oh, we're doing good, we're doing good. Yeah, we're 35 minutes in. Okay, so I did a flat wrap ribbon. There's a twisted. Here is a flat wrap ribbon wind. That gives you that really beautiful wave there. Sort of real sort of princessy. Uh, I think the flat wrap is a bit more sort of prom style in, in terms of what I determine as what I'm looking for from it. Because when I'm doing the textured wave, it gives just that little bit more lived in. I know I said that word lived in a lot, but it's, it's one of the terms that I really like to use when, when creating texture into hair and lived in colours as well, lived in blondes, that little sort of smoked off root, deeper root colour, haircuts that are lived in, a little bit more textured, a little bit more frayed, raw edges. Uh, I think that's going to be or is a trend that we're going to be seeing a lot more of because I think the sort of precise application of colours and haircuts being precision is, is sort of moving away for spring summer. We've just had another question come in. I haven't quite put it up on the screen yet. Um, yeah. I know that you would never kiss and tell, but yeah. you're 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 very you're thinking about what this question's gonna be now, aren't you? Me and Mark have never kissed. <laughs> no, no, not us. <laughs> <laughs> we were close one night. We were <laughs> <laughs> no, right, okay. <laughs> was that after Norway? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I would take a glass off to read this question now. Um, <laughs> have, you done, have you done any famous people's hair? And if you have, who was it? Oh, no, I just have, so I do a, a big YouTuber's hair. That's the, the biggest. I get this question asked a lot, and Lee always goes, You've never done anyone famous? And uh, <laughs> it's like, No, not really. Never done anybody like A list or anything. I've done a lot of. Um, like Love Island people, glamour girls and all this. But this morning, I just did a YouTuber. Uh, I've been doing her hair for about eight years now, nine years maybe, uh, Emily Cannon. So if you go and search Emily Cannon, yeah, I've done her hair since she she's 24 now, she told me. Yeah, 24 to, yeah. And uh, yeah, I've been doing it for, for years. And she was doing YouTube back then and she had just over 100,000 subscribers. and She's just, well, I mean, she's 1.1, 1.2 million now subscribers in that time. So I, I, I was saying to her today, oh, like, if I'd have started YouTube back then, where would I be now? But I never dwell or think about what ifs, just what cans. And, and that's the thing. Like, I'm doing it now. I'm doing YouTube now. But that's, that's probably the, the, the most famous person maybe i mean she's got one she's got over a million subscribers so that's over a million people globally that know who she is or or are big fans of hers shall i say but yeah, yeah. Another, another one in for mamba and she says do you have any tips for doing vintage um oh sorry take the glass off do you have any tips on doing vintage tong recipe uh well we've actually got a, a vintage tong recipe on one of our lives so you can go back to youtube and you can flip back to vintage and there's all the top top tips and tricks how to get a vintage uh martin holmes has also done um a hair up recipe where he was using a vintage technique as well but talking about the the finish of vintage tong pool when yeah. we look at that one length below that you've done there and the way yeah. you've it out that looks quite vintagey to me does it to you or yeah yeah very very uh just soft vintage waves it is isn't it yeah and so with that one then you've just literally done twisted tong yeah and then combed it out afterwards yeah yeah, that's, you just see me comb it out. So yeah. I, I prepped that earlier today and I just brushed that out. That's incredible. And that was it with that big rake comb. So it gives you that. I mean, I'll, I'll show you in a second, actually, when I've just, I'll let this cool down and spray it. And I'll just show you how to get a little bit more texture into that one. And I'll show you a little bit on this one behind me, how to create a bit more texture in that as well. And then uh, we'll, we'll get onto this one. So I, I hope that answers your question, Amber. And uh, so it's YouTube, LSE, 
and a vintage tong recipe and you will literally see the, the whole recipe done with all the top tips and tricks. And Laura has asked, what's your favourite hairstyle to do? Favourite hairstyle to do? I'm, I'm a really, I do love, I know I've just been talking about lifting and texture, but I do love precision cutting. Um, and I think I'm a bit of a bob enthusiast, shall I say. I do look, I do look for a good bob. Um, <laughs> I'll just spray this and then uh, I'll show you a bit of, uh, bit of styling. But my favourite, yeah, Bob's um, favourite hairstyle. It's a good question. It stumps me, to be honest, when it comes to favourite hairstyle. We, we do so many daily in the salon. Um, colour is, is a big thing for me. I do love doing different colours. I've got, I, I, I get inspired by different industries. I'll just show you one. When it comes to, so this one was inspired. So this is a Lee Stafford recipe, the, the long wrap, but shorter. And the the hair colour was inspired by a Sex on the Beach cocktail. Mm -hmm. So you've got the deep red grenadine roots and, and you've got the yellows running through there. Nice. So, yeah, I'm a real sort of, I experiment a lot, but not on clients that are paying. I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by mannequins, so I will just practice and practice and practice in here and then put some bits together and like I'm doing like I'm doing now this is why I love doing these lives so I've just added a little bit of lifting through here and what we're going to do similar to what we do with the spiral rose where we sort of twist it and push but this because this is just the, the twisted tongue I'm just going to let me move back a bit I'm just going to grab this section here fingers in and I'm just gripping like that and pushing, gripping and pushing. There, gripping and pushing. Let's do a little bit further up. In there, grip and push. And it just fingers and thumbs is also a thing. If you if you see a lot of my clients, I'm always like this because to get these sort of frayed and twisted edges, I'm always fingers and thumbs and just styling this hair out. So lifting. And you can see there, I'm just sort of trying to get those roots a little bit dishevelled. And you can see it's just lifting and opening up that through there. So if you can see side by side, this is lovely and sort of sleek and smooth. But this is just a bit wider, a bit more texture. So that's that one now. Just lift that up so you can see. See the difference. See how wide that is there. Get a bit of volume in there, just basically like effilage, you know, oh no, petrissage, sorry, when we're shampooing. So petrissage, that root in there, just to add a little bit of texture back home with your fingers and thumbs. Look at that. Wow, that's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got this, which is your sort of real sort of dressed up glam look. And then this is for your clients that just want that real lived in textured look that they're just ready to, to go out. Maybe not as formal, but just a bit more, maybe shopping, that sort of thing. But that there. So I'll leave that one there so you can see. I'm gonna prep this one in a second. I'm just gonna bring in, this was the twisted tongue and the spiral rose techniques together. And that's why it's sort of really disheveled. It's a bit shorter than this mannequin as well, but again, I'll get my fingers and thumbs into that root area. This has already been prepped with quite a bit of lived in before, but I'll get a bit more in there and just really spraying it into that hair. And then we really wanna get that in. We can do sort of middle parting like that. We could flick it all over, expose all that sort of purple color that's in there, a bit more sort of rock and roll. But then when it comes to the, the dressing out like the spiral rose, what we would do, I'll come close to this so you can see, pick up an individual curl there. We could twist it, twist it, hold on to that end, and then push. Gives us that texture there. Push, push, push. 
and it gives us that real nice texture. Let's do another one. So just twist, push it up into there. You don't have to go all the way into the root, you could just leave that one sitting around about the cheekbone. If we look there, when we're looking at creating shapes, we're looking at what we want to create around the client, which is going to complement them. So you know the technique with the spiral rows, but with this piece, we might only do that because we want that curve to sit there. And then when we pick up, say we want to pick up this one here, create a bit more height, we'll go here, <coughs> twist it, hold it. Let's back comb, well, back comb it, brush it. It gives us that. Another one here. Twist, push back. And that's what it'll give us. It, it gives us the ability, because we've got the structure in there of the, the built up of the double blow mousse already that's in there, just spray the lifting in there to add a bit more texture. We know it's going to hold its shape. If we've done a bit too much, let's just pull that out a little bit. And get that length in there again. We know it's going to hold its shape because we've prepped it enough. So I hope, I hope these tips are all helping you guys. Yeah, they're, they're great tips, Paul. They really are. Now you can see here, we've got the same wrap all the way around, but we've got different wrap methods. So you can see some are twisted and some are flat wrap. The ribbon wrap. You can see, I think, best at the front there. So that one just there, that's a flat. And we've got these textured ones just living. That's a that one there is a, a what is it? Twisted tong method. So what we're going to do now? Just going to lift this up. I'm going to start back combing or back. Yeah. Getting my hands in. Getting my hands in. But keep your questions coming, guys. We've got just over ten minutes left. So you can see this. Let me get this out. There's our curl. Let's just twist it. We're going to hold that end. I'm just going to push it. So you can see what it does there. And then push up into there, into there. And then those ends, we just want to be sort of pushing them, but so they come out of our fingers. Another one. Twist, twist, twist. Hold off that end. Push. Push into that root. Twist it if you need to. Push. And then just push till it comes out of your fingers. And then you start to build up that shape in there. And again. You twist it. Push into there and then we're just taking that out of our fingers and the thing I love about this is I love these these sort of wispy wispy ends that stay in this because it gives it that um, sort of just that softness but you've got such a strong shape in, in the whole thing wouldn't you agree Mike yeah yeah so by by using the two different instead of the traditional um spiral rows technique all over by using the different tonguing techniques you're almost just adding a little bit more of a dimension in there a little bit more of a texture in the haircut or in the hairstyle would you say that yeah because i don't know if you can pick up on camera but i can tell yeah which one was was twisted yeah and which one was flat wrapped mm. yeah it's good then we're twisting that again. And and this sort of thing would be just great. I'm, we, I know we've we touched base on it again, but it'd be great for shows, competition work. Um, that would be massive, wouldn't it? Photographic work. And basically, this this um, dressing out of the, the rows that you're doing, the the, the the spiral rows that you're picking, or the, or the texture that you've done with your tongs. Yeah. You could almost do that technique of what you're using you could do that on any texture couldn't you so you could actually say crimp the hair and do and do that technique as well couldn't you yeah yeah you so could any any kind of texture you could do this kind of finishing technique on and get a different result yeah absolutely and it's something i mean it's not your day-to-day -day 
salon sort of hair up. I don't think you'd be you'd be getting many clients come in saying, oh, I want the spiral rose to go to Tesco. But it's something that we're giving you a toolkit and we're giving you the ability to understand what happens if you curl this way. Yeah. If you hold the hair, yeah. if you push it back on itself, what, what can you achieve shape wise? And I think that's something that you have to really look at. Don't look at it very literal. Look at what we're sort of creating as a shape. And then how could you adjust that for your day to day clients? If they wanted something which was sort of a bit more, I don't know, going out, not shopping as such, but going out on a night out, what could we do? We could probably do this and then flatten it off, take that through there, and we could have this, this maybe a bit more of like an updo. But you can see these different way, uh, yeah, waves that we put into the hair, they're, they're just reacting slightly differently in the way that they, that one was a, was a flat wrap. That there, then this was more of a textured. You get a bit more of like a bunched up look to it. Who's going to be trying this recipe? Who hasn't tried this recipe and who wants to try it now? I always find when I do the traditional uh, spiral rows, it takes me a couple of roses to get to get into the technique. Yeah. It takes me a couple of a couple of goes to really get the fit. It's a real feely kind of thing, isn't it? Oh, it is. But as soon as you start to get those little buds. Appear, yeah. yeah. It, it, it sort of, and it builds on you, doesn't it? It builds yeah. and builds and builds. <clears throat> yeah, it's really a really cool technique. I mean... Who, who came up with it out of the LSE? Actually, sure. I can't, I can't remember, actually. Yeah, it's a really cool, cool technique and look. But you can see those little pieces. Maybe not because it's a white background, but there's these little pieces that are just that just make it sort of a little bit more um, magical as such. Just a little bit more, again, lived in. And then we're twisting and I'm just going to push back, push back into that root area and then just creating those little buds. How long we got left? A few minutes. Yeah. If there's any more questions guys? Get them in. Be more than happy to to answer them. But who's going to be entering competitions this year and using any of the, the techniques and recipes that we show you guys? And how, how important do you feel it is, Paul, that that the guys enter competitions or you get your salon team involved in competitions? How important do I think it is? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really important, and I, and I, I don't think the importance of it is winning. I think the the important thing is to build up your skill set, to, to understand that you need to research, and that you have a look at what other people are doing competition wise, and being able to really see what is happening in the industry. And I think prepping for competition does that to you. But with, yeah, with my team, I mean, I. There's a lot of competitions this year that we are going to be entering. But I think it's I think it's just the confidence thing. I think it, it helps you grow as a as an individual. Definitely. We want those buds just to be sitting in there just a little bit tighter because if they're a little bit looser, 
I mean, I'll do a loose one so you can see the difference. It'll just hang low a little bit. And this is what I was saying about customizing it to a client. So you could do this, and then like I did on here to create this texture, you could just twist it a little bit, little bit, little bit, and then have that textured wave that you've got there. Or you can just go all the way in. Good, good. And Jane has just said that the least after education photo shoot competition brief is now with your tutors. So you can um, grab all that information off your tutors and you are ready to go and enter least after education photo shoot. Oh, amazing. Good luck. Good luck to everybody. And Tracy has asked, how long would this take you if you were to do this in your salon? Um, hair ups depend really in salon to, to how much hair the individual's got. Um, if we're going to be going really this sort of really textured into, into the root area, if we're doing it a bit softer, maybe not as long, but it's all, it's all very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not relative, it's all relative to who's walking through your door. I hope that helps. But when it, when it comes to working on the salon floor, it is a case of when they come in, you consult them, you see how much hair they've got. And Jackie's just said that Aberdon and Whitney College will be entering the Lee Stafford Education Competition. Uh, fantastic, Jackie. Glad to hear that. And when is the competition, sorry? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get an art to pop up in a minute. <laughs> Jane, when is it? <laughs> <laughs> just that we'll be entering as well fantastic nice to hear from you bond always a pleasure it's nice to sit back and watch you work paul is it yeah <laughs> The closing oh. date for the competition is the 29th of April. Not long then. What what are you guys? I mean, I would I would as a as, as a bit of a of a thing, I would do the uh, ombre technique with the long grad and I'd, I'd probably finish off with with this or maybe the twisted tongue to be honest. Something Something like that, and then really make it really dishevelled. Not not giving away anything, but thank you, Jane. Thank you, Paula. Makes you want to get your get your camera out now, Paul, done it and photograph it. Mate, I will be. I'll be I'll be I'll be in this studio for the rest of today, creating content and some videos and, and I probably will put this up. Uh, I'll probably style it out just to I might even do something just coming over to one side. But I just just to accentuate that. Yeah, it's looking good actually. It really starts coming together, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah, and it is. I mean, it is. It's all relative. It's all uh, opinions. What, however you want it to look, and what best to suit your client. We're, we're literally giving you a technique that you can use to create these little buds of backcomb that aren't difficult to get out, but they're really nice to manipulate. If you nice. want to get a little bit deeper in there, but I do love these. Like I said at the beginning, just these longer pieces that that just flow out. 
and um, winners winners for the least effort competition will be announced by the 11th of may Not sure. So last two, what's the time? Oh, we we are late. We are late. Really, come on, isn't it? You've really built that shape up, haven't you? It's almost like those underneath sections you're building the foundation in, and then you're sitting the other ones on top of that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So this last piece really here. Really good. Twist. Push <clears> in <throat> there, and then let's just get those pieces just nice and disheveled, and that's going to be the piece that just just fills that gap where the parting would be. What do you think, everybody? You enjoying that? Yeah, let me know. Absolutely stunning, Paul. Always a, always a pleasure to work with you, Paul. Oh, mate, ditto. And um, loads of great tips in there. Um, so many tips. Absolutely fantastic. We have an amazing pool just come up. Oh, good. Let's just get this where we go. We'll get all three side by side. Lovely. So we can see those different tonguing techniques. Fantastic. There we go. I'll bring them a little bit closer so you can see them all. Absolutely amazing, Paul. Thank you very much, Paul, for sharing. Uh, wow, thank you so much, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you. Absolutely. I think we're ready to do. We're ready to do a hair show now, aren't we, Paul? I think. We are. Yeah. We, these three are, are free, so. Uh... We're getting all ready for it. <laughs> absolutely amazing thank you very much thanks everybody for watching thank you very much indeed thanks for your questions uh thank yeah, you for your help um we are just three minutes over so um we're gonna just have our last little look of our models absolute pleasure paul thank you very much thank you much yeah thank you much mate and then thank you everybody yeah no worries and we say um goodbye from lee stafford education bye bye, -bye.